Hello students, in this video, we are going to learn about the introduction of design methods. So far in the course Digital VLSI Design, we have completed four different chapters and this is the chapter 5 and the name of chapter 5 is Design Methods. So in this video, we will be knowing what we are going to learn in chapter 5. The name of which is design methods. See the main problem in the design of your high speed devices or high speed IC is the design cost. At the end, we may use many technologies and at the end, we people are concerned only about the cost. So the main problem in the design of high speed IC is the design cost. So how we can cope with the cost is the new design methodology. So we must make sure that we must reduce our design cost and the design time. So the term design methodology refers to the approach followed to solve the VLSI design problem. So for solving the design, that is VLSI design problem, we are going for the various design methods that is called as design methodology. As we know that VLSI stands for very large scale integration. It refers to those ICs that contain more than 10 power 5 transistors will be there on your particular IC. So the circuits which are designed that may be a general purpose IC, okay? or it can be an application specific ICs. So that is called as ASIC. And general purpose IC means microprocessor, digital signal processors, memory. They are used for a particular purpose. That is general purpose. We can use that memory for any logic. It can be, we can use that for implementing any combinational or sequential circuits or whatever the function it may be. If I need a memory, I can use that memory. So they are coming under general purpose ICs. There may be an another type of IC that is called as application specific integrated circuit, so called as ASIC. These are designed for a narrow range of application or even a single one means if I want to implement some function, for example, I want to make a washing machine, for example, okay? So the IC that I am going to use for that particular washing machine will be built for that particular machine only. I'm, I cannot use that particular IC on to my some other devices, means based on my particular application, I can design and I see and they are called as ASIC. So in this unit, we will be learning much in depth about ASIC and what are the types of ASIC and everything will be dealt in this unit. So design methods means designing of such a circuit is a difficult task means I need some specification based on particular specification. I want to design my IC. So designing such a circuit is a difficult task. So the first requirement of course will be a specification. The specification will be given based on that specification a circuit has to be designed. So besides this, while designing, there are different entities that one would like to optimize. There will be various entities just like that based on specification, we cannot end up with an IC. So we must make sure that we are optimizing certain entities. And those are nothing but your area, speed, power dissipation, design time and the testability. So one can combine all these entities into a single cost function called as VLSI cost function. But it is impossible to design such a VLSI circuit using one cost function. Okay, So the complexity is simply too high. So there are two main concepts that are helpful to deal with this complexity and they are called as hierarchy and abstraction. So this hierarchy, we know that order, levels, hierarchy, hierarchy will means a tree, a leaf, seed, we have certain hierarchy. In the same way, hierarchy shows the structure of a design at different levels of description. And abstraction, you'll be just having a model that will be hiding the lower level details. So these two methods or concepts, I can say, is going to deal with the complexity while I'm designing my 
circuit or my VLSI circuits. So hierarchy is not sufficient, means a single hierarchy. Usually we will be having like from seed and then it will become a plant and then it will be becoming a tree, all these things. So, but for a VLSI design process, it is highly impossible to have a single hierarchy. So there is a Y chart, which means there will be a three domains. I can call that as a physical domain, structural domain and a behavioral domain based on the physical domain or based on the the components or where I want to place my IC or based on the layouts, I can classify, I can have a hierarchy and that is starting from the transistor layout. First, I can go for the transistor layout. From the transistor layout, a cell will be formed and then from the various cells, I can club and I can make a module layout and then I have to check for floor planning and there will be a physical partition. See, this is just an introduction part that we don't have this in our topic. So I'm just giving you an introduction where we are having a hierarchy to solve the problem of designing the VLSA chip. And as I said that, that there will not be a single hierarchy and it is impossible to design the VLSA design process. So we are having a three hierarchy or I can say there are three domain. So physical, structural and behavior. So so-called as a Y chart. And this structural domain will be starting with the transistors and will be moved on into the gates. From the gates, I can make ALUs or the memories. And all these will be combined and it will be making app processes. And in behavioral domain, I can start with the transfer functions and I can move on to the logic and then it will become the register transfer or RTL level will be there. And then algorithm and finally, based on behavior, I can make my system. So the end of my physical domain is nothing but the physical partition, but the end of my structural domain is the processor. And the end point of my behavior or the last level of hierarchy is the system. And the design of VLSI circuit, I said, is a complex process. That's what we have went for the various concepts like a hierarchy. So more the degree of freedom there are, the bigger is the search space for the optimal design. Means in there are two types of design. So design methods means full custom design and a semi-custom design. In full custom design, there is a maximal freedom. Means the designer has the ability to determine the shape of every mask layer. He himself can frame each and every mask layer for the production of the chip. So he can get the search, sp search space will be bigger for him because he got the maximal freedom. Whereas design methods with the limited freedom is referred to us by the term semi-custom. And we will see what are semi-custom design, what are full custom design and what are ASIC in this unit. And the topics that we will be covering in depth in the chapter five, that is so-called design methods are the semi-custom design, full custom design, application specific integrated circuit, and uh, programmable logic devices. So in that programmable logic devices, we will be learning about the simple programmable logic arrays or simple programmable logic devices and about the complex programmable logic devices, so-called as FPGA, which is field programmable gate array. And we will be starting with our hardware description language for designing your IC. We will be writing a certain language. So the language that we are going to use is HDL, so hardware description language. So that also will be based on your system based design and also based on the data path design. And we will be learning about the high level state machine and some sample progr programs which is based on the system based as well as the data path design. So in this unit, we'll be learning in depth about the design methods. I hope you understood the, about the introduction of unit five. Thank you.